Think you need to spend a small fortune on weight loss programs that don't work? Think again. We're talking about five FDA-approved medications that are changing how we approach weight loss entirely. But here's what most people don't know. These aren't diet pills, and they're not a quick fix. Today, we'll break down exactly how Ozempic, Wigovi, Ribelsis, Munjaro, and Zepbound work, what the real risks are, and the surprising facts your doctor might not have time to explain. Let's start by understanding what makes these drugs so different from everything that came before. Understanding how these drugs actually work. Here's the thing most people get wrong about these medications. They're not stimulants like the diet pills of the past. They don't speed up your metabolism or block fat absorption. Instead, they work by mimicking hormones your body already produces naturally. We're dealing with two main types here. The first group includes Ozempic, Wigovi, and Ribelsis. These are called GLP-1 receptor agonists. GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide 1, which is a hormone your intestines release when you eat. The second group includes Mounjaro and Zepbound, which are dual agonists. They target both GLP-1 and another hormone called GIP, or glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide. Now, here's how this affects your body. When you eat, these hormones normally tell your pancreas to release insulin, but only when your blood sugar is elevated. They also slow down how quickly food leaves your stomach. This is called gastric emptying, and it's crucial for understanding why these drugs work so well for weight loss. But the real game changer happens in your brain. These medications cross the blood-brain barrier and affect the hypothalamus, the part of your brain that controls hunger and satiety. They don't just make you feel full faster, they reduce what researchers call food noise, that constant mental chatter about food that many people with obesity experience. Here's something that might surprise you. These drugs also affect your brain's reward pathways. You know how some foods trigger that intense craving or satisfaction? These medications can dampen that reward response. People often report that their favorite foods just don't seem as appealing anymore. It's not willpower, it's neurochemistry. The blood sugar connection is important too. Even if you don't have diabetes, these medications help stabilize your glucose levels throughout the day. When your blood sugar is stable, you're less likely to experience those energy crashes that lead to cravings and overeating. Now let's address the elephant in the room. People sometimes dismiss these as the easy way out. But here's what the research shows. Obesity involves complex interactions between genetics, hormones, brain chemistry, and environmental factors. For many people, the hormonal signals that should regulate appetite and weight simply aren't working properly. These medications essentially restore some of that normal hormonal function. Think of it this way. If someone with diabetes takes insulin, we don't call that cheating. We understand they need medication to manage a biological process that isn't working correctly. The same principle applies here. The dual action drugs like Mounjaro and Zepbound take this a step further. GIP, the second hormone they target, also affects how your body processes fat and glucose. Some research suggests this combination might be even more effective for weight loss than GLP-1 agonists alone. Here's another fascinating aspect most people don't know about. These drugs can change your food preferences. Studies show people often naturally gravitate toward healthier foods in smaller portions. They're not forcing themselves to eat less. They genuinely want less food and different types of food. The timing matters too. Unlike traditional diet pills that you might take multiple times a day, most of these are long-acting. Ozempic, Wagovi, Munjaro, and Zepbound are weekly injections. Rebelsis is a once-daily pill that maintains steady hormone levels throughout the day. But here's the reality check. These medications work best when your natural hormone systems are disrupted in the first place. That's why they're most effective for people with significant weight to lose, often those with a BMI over 30 or over 27 with weight-related health conditions. The bottom line is this. These aren't magic bullets, but they're addressing the biological reality of weight regulation in a way we've never been able to before. They're giving people's bodies the hormonal signals they need to regulate appetite and weight naturally. Now let's break down each of these medications individually, because the details matter when you're making decisions about your health. Let's start with the one that started it all. Ozempic. The active ingredient is semaglutide, and it was FDA approved back in December 2017. But here's the catch. It was approved for type 2 diabetes, not weight loss. The weight loss was what doctors call an off-label use. People with diabetes were losing significant weight, and word spread quickly. Ozempic is a once-weekly injection that you give yourself, usually in your thigh, stomach, or upper arm. You start with a low dose, 
or 0.25 mg weekly, and gradually increase over several months to either 1 or 2 mg weekly. The injection pen is pre-filled and relatively easy to use, though many people are initially nervous about self-injecting. Then came Wegovi in June 2021, a game changer. It's the exact same medication as Ozempic, semaglutide, but it was specifically approved by the FDA for chronic weight management. The key difference is the dosing. Wegovi goes up to 2.4 mg weekly, which is higher than the typical Ozempic dose for diabetes. Here's what's interesting about the approval process. The FDA required extensive clinical trials showing not just weight loss, but sustained weight loss over time. The STEP trials, as they're called, followed people for 68 weeks and showed an average weight loss of about 15% of body weight. That's substantial. We're talking 30 pounds for someone who weighs 200 pounds. Now ribelsis is the odd one out in this group. It is the first and only GLP-1 receptor agonist available in tablet form offering a needle-free alternative to the injectable version of the same active ingredient, semaglutide. It was FDA-approved for diabetes, and like Ozempic, weight loss is an off-label use. With ribelsis, you must take it on an empty stomach with just a sip of water, then wait at least 30 minutes before eating or drinking anything else. This makes it less convenient than the weekly injections for many people. And, the absorption of oral semaglutide is quite poor. Less than 1% of the dose gets into your bloodstream compared to the injections. That's why the pill doses are much higher, 7 or 14 mg daily compared to the weekly injection doses. Moving on to the newer players, Munjaro hit the scene in May 2022. The active ingredient is tirzepatide, and initially it was approved only for type 2 diabetes. But the weight loss results were even more impressive than what we saw with semaglutide. We're talking about average weight loss of 20 to 22% in clinical trials. Mounjaro is also a weekly injection, but the dosing schedule is different. You start at 2.5 mg weekly and can go up to 15 mg weekly. It has a dual mechanism, hitting both GLP-1 and GIP receptors, which seems to make it more potent for weight loss. Then in November 2023, the FDA approved Zepbound, which is tirzepatide specifically for weight loss. Same drug as Mounjaro, same injection schedule but approved specifically for chronic weight management in adults with obesity or overweight with at least one weight-related condition. Here's something most people don't realize about the approval timeline. These approvals came remarkably fast by pharmaceutical standards. Typically, it takes 10 to 15 years from initial research to FDA approval. But the obesity epidemic and the clear effectiveness of these drugs accelerated the process. Now let's talk about the practical reality of getting these medications. Supply chain issues have been a major problem, especially for Wagovi and Munjaro. Manufacturing these complex medications is challenging, and demand has far exceeded supply. The injection process itself is simpler than most people expect. The pens are designed for home use, with tiny needles that most people barely feel. You rotate injection sites to prevent tissue irritation, and the medication is stored in your refrigerator. Here's a crucial detail about timing. All of these work best when taken consistently. The weekly injections should be given on the same day each week. And if you miss a dose, there are specific guidelines about when to take it and when to skip it entirely. The FDA approval process also requires extensive safety data. We're talking about studies involving tens of thousands of people followed for years. This isn't experimental. These medications have been thoroughly tested for both effectiveness and safety in large populations. Now here's where these medications get interesting. The weight loss is just the beginning. The research shows benefits that go far beyond the number on the scale, and some of these findings have surprised even the researchers. Let's start with the cardiovascular benefits, because this is huge. The SELECT trial, published in 2023, followed over 17,500 people taking semaglutide for more than three years. The results were remarkable, a 20% reduction in major cardiovascular events like heart attacks and strokes. We're not just talking about people losing weight, we're talking about people living longer, healthier lives. Here's what's fascinating about this, the cardiovascular benefits appeared before significant weight loss occurred. This suggests the medication is doing something beyond just helping people lose pounds. It's affecting inflammation, blood vessel function, and other cardiovascular risk factors directly. Blood pressure improvements are consistent across all these medications. People typically see reductions of 5 to 10 points in their systolic blood pressure, which might not sound like much, but it's clinically significant. 
For many people, this means reducing or even eliminating blood pressure medications. The cholesterol story is equally compelling. Most people see improvements in their lipid profiles, lower LDL cholesterol, higher HDL cholesterol, and reduced triglycerides. Again, some of these changes happen before major weight loss, suggesting direct metabolic effects. Now, here's something that doesn't get enough attention. The impact on sleep apnea. Sleep apnea affects millions of people and significantly increases the risk of heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. Studies show that people on these medications often see dramatic improvements in their sleep apnea, sometimes to the point where they no longer need their CPAP machines. The joint health benefits are life-changing for many people. When you're carrying extra weight, every step puts additional stress on your knees, hips, and ankles. But beyond just the mechanical relief of weight loss, these medications seem to reduce inflammation throughout the body, which can help with arthritis and other joint conditions. Here's where it gets interesting from a psychological standpoint. People consistently report what researchers call food freedom, that constant mental preoccupation with food. This isn't willpower. It's a fundamental change in how the brain responds to food cues. The quality of life improvements are substantial. People report having more energy, better mood, improved self-confidence, and greater participation in activities they'd avoided due to their weight. These aren't just side effects of losing weight. They're direct benefits of having better metabolic health. Long-term metabolic improvements extend beyond weight loss. These medications can improve insulin sensitivity, reduce inflammation markers, and even affect liver function. Many people with fatty liver disease see significant improvements in their liver enzymes and liver fat content. Here's something most people don't know. These medications might have benefits for addiction and impulse control beyond food. Early research suggests they might help with alcohol use disorder, smoking cessation, and even gambling addiction. The brain pathways involved in food reward overlap with other addictive behaviors. The bottom line is this. While weight loss is the primary goal, these medications are affecting multiple systems in your body in ways that can improve your overall health and quality of life substantially. Now let's talk about what your doctor might not have enough time to fully explain, the risks and side effects. Because while these medications can be life-changing, they're not right for everyone, and the side effects can be significant. The most common side effects are gastrointestinal, and they affect the majority of people, especially when starting or increasing doses. We're talking about nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, and stomach pain. For most people, these symptoms are worse during the first few weeks, and tend to improve as your body adjusts. But here's what many people don't expect. The nausea can be severe enough to interfere with daily activities. Some people describe it as feeling like they have morning sickness or food poisoning. The key is starting with very low doses and increasing gradually. But even then, about 10 to 15% of people stop taking these medications because of gastrointestinal side effects. Now, let's discuss the more serious risks that require immediate medical attention. Pancreatitis is rare but potentially life-threatening. We're talking about severe abdominal pain that radiates to your back, often accompanied by nausea and vomiting. If you experience this, you need to stop the medication and seek emergency care immediately. Gallbladder problems are another concern. Rapid weight loss itself increases the risk of gallstones, but these medications may have an additional effect. People report severe upper abdominal pain, especially after eating fatty foods. Some require surgery to remove their gallbladder. Here's the risk that gets the most attention in the media. Thyroid concerns. In animal studies, semaglutide and terzepatide cause thyroid tumors, including a rare type called medullary thyroid carcinoma. Now, this hasn't been proven to happen in humans, but if you have a personal or family history of thyroid cancer, or a condition called multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2, these medications are absolutely contraindicated. There's also a risk that most people don't consider muscle mass loss. When you lose weight rapidly, you typically lose both fat and muscle. With these medications, people can lose 20 to 30% of their total weight as muscle rather than fat. This is why protein intake and resistance exercise become crucial when you're on these medications. Kidney problems can occur, especially if you become dehydrated from vomiting or diarrhea. Your doctor should monitor your kidney function regularly and you need to stay well hydrated, which can be challenging when you're nauseous. Here's something that surprises many people. These medications can affect your mental health. Some people report increased anxiety and depression. The mechanism isn't fully understood, 
but it's significant enough that you should discuss your mental health history with your doctor before starting. Drug interactions are important to consider. These medications slow gastric emptying, which can affect how other medications are absorbed. If you take medications for diabetes, blood pressure, or blood thinners, your doses might need adjustment. Who should absolutely avoid these medications? Pregnant or breastfeeding women, people with a history of pancreatitis, those with certain types of thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2, and people with severe gastroparesis or digestive disorders. Age matters too. These medications haven't been extensively studied in people over 75, and the side effects might be more severe in older adults. Here's the reality nobody talks about enough. Rapid weight regain when stopping. Studies show that people regain about two-thirds of their lost weight within a year of stopping these medications. Your appetite and food cravings return to previous levels. Cost is a practical risk factor. These medications can cost $800 to $1,200 per month without insurance coverage. Many insurance plans don't cover them for weight loss, only for diabetes. The bottom line, these are powerful medications with significant benefits, but they require careful medical supervision and aren't appropriate for everyone. So, you're considering one of these medications. Here's exactly what you need to know to make an informed decision and navigate the process successfully. First, let's talk about choosing the right healthcare provider. Not all doctors are equally experienced with these medications. You want someone who understands the nuances, an endocrinologist, obesity medicine specialist, or primary care physician who regularly prescribes these drugs. Ask how many patients they've treated with GLP-1 agonists and what their approach is to monitor and adjusting doses. Here are the specific questions you need to ask during your consultation. What's my baseline hemoglobin A1C, even if I don't have diabetes? What are my kidney function markers? Do I have any family history of thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome? Have I had pancreatitis or gallbladder problems? These aren't just screening questions. The answers directly affect which medication is safest for you. Now, about choosing between injection versus oral options. Ribelsis might seem appealing because it's a pill, but remember the strict dosing requirements. Empty stomach, minimal water, wait 30 minutes. Most people find the weekly injections more convenient once they get used to them. The injection pens are designed for home use, and the needles are tiny. Here's the insurance reality check. Most insurance plans cover these medications for diabetes, but not for weight loss alone. You'll need documentation of obesity, plus at least one weight-related condition like high blood pressure, sleep apnea, or prediabetes. Your doctor can help build this case, but be prepared for prior authorization requirements and possible appeals. Cost-saving strategies exist if insurance doesn't cover the full amount. Manufacturer savings programs can reduce costs significantly. Novo Nordisk offers programs for Ozempic and Wagovi, while Eli Lilly has programs for Munjaro and Zepbound. Some people also explore pharmacy discount programs or even medical tourism, though you need to weigh cost savings against safety and quality concerns. Lifestyle factors absolutely matter for maximizing effectiveness. These medications work best when combined with dietary changes and regular exercise. You don't need a perfect diet, but focusing on protein intake becomes crucial to preserve muscle mass during weight loss. Aim for at least 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight daily. Here's your realistic timeline expectations. Most people see appetite suppression within the first week, but significant weight loss typically takes three to six months. The maximum effect usually occurs around six to 12 months. Most people need to stay on these medications long-term to maintain weight loss, so factor that into your financial and lifestyle planning. These five FDA-approved medications represent the biggest breakthrough in weight management we've seen in decades but they're tools that require medical guidance and realistic expectations. If you're considering this path, your next step is consulting with a qualified healthcare provider who can assess whether you're a good candidate and help you navigate the process safely. If you have gained insight from this video, please subscribe and like for more evidence-based health content that cuts through the confusion.